Barclay Newman and Eugene Nieder's examination of Paul's letter to the Romans presents it as a seminal text in Christian theology, primarily due to its comprehensive discourse on salvation, righteousness and faith. The letter's appeal and importance are attributed to its theological depth, particularly its exposition on the theme of salvation, how God justifies humans through faith, a process independent of their works or ethnic background. This core message, encapsulated in Romans 1.17, is the driving force behind the letter's various theological and practical instructions. Also, the analysis emphasizes that the letter begins with an acknowledgement of humanity's universal sinfulness. Both Jews and Gentiles have fallen short of God's glory and stand in need of redemption. In chapters 1.18, 32, Paul accentuates the Gentiles' descent into sin, affirming that their rejection of God's truth has led to moral and spiritual decay. This part sets the stage for the universal need for salvation, as God's wrath is revealed against all forms of ungodliness and wickedness. Moreover, following this, the letter shifts focus to the Jews, particularly in chapters 2, 1, 3, 20. Paul contends that mere possession of the law or descent from Abraham does not guarantee righteousness. He dismantles any notion of ethnic superiority, asserting that both Jews and Gentiles are equally culpable before God. This section culminates in the powerful declaration that all are under the power of sin, necessitating a grace that transcends human distinctions. Furthermore, central to Romans and to Newman and Nieder's analysis is the exposition of justification by faith in chapters 3, 21, 4, 25. Here, Paul lays out the means of being made right with God, which is apart from the law and based solely on faith, using Abraham as a prime example of faith predating the law. This argument is pivotal, establishing that salvation is a gift of grace accessible to all who believe, not just a select few. In addition, chapters 5-8 delve into the implications of this justification. Paul explains that being justified by faith ushers one into a state of grace, peace with God, and hope of glory. He explores the transformative effects of grace and the role of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life, contrasting the dominion of sin and death with the new life in the Spirit. These chapters culminate in an exultant assurance of God's love and the eventual glory awaiting believers, encapsulating the profound spiritual journey from condemnation to redemption. Further, Newman and Nida highlight the practical aspect of Romans. In chapters 12-15, Paul addresses the ethical implications of the gospel, detailing how justified believers are to live out their faith in various aspects of life. This includes exercising spiritual gifts, loving others, submitting to authorities, and living in harmony with all. These instructions root the theological truths in everyday practices, demonstrating that understanding salvation should directly impact one's behavior and relationships. Besides, the concluding section of the letter, chapters 9-11, is deeply personal and reflective. Paul grapples with the problem of Israel's unbelief and the broader questions of God's purposes in history. These chapters reveal his heartfelt anguish for his kinsmen and his struggle to reconcile the reality of their unbelief with the promises of God. Yet even here, Paul affirms God's faithfulness and sovereignty, envisioning a future where God's mercy extends to all, both Jew and Gentile. Additionally, Newman and Nieder's analysis of Romans indicates its continuing relevance. For them, Romans is not just a theological treatise, but a letter that addresses the real existential concerns of its readers, both then and now. It speaks to the human condition, offering hope and direction for navigating the complexities of sin, faith and righteousness. It's a letter that not only expounds profound theological truths, but also demonstrates how these truths are to be lived out in practical ways. In conclusion, Paul's letter to the Romans, as examined by Newman and Nida, stands as a monumental text in Christian literature. Its systematic exploration of sin, salvation, and sanctification through faith has left an indelible mark on Christian thought, 
its blend of deep theological reflection with practical instructions makes it a unique and enduring guide for those seeking to understand and live out the Christian faith. The letter's impact transcends its original context, continuing to inspire, challenge and guide readers in their spiritual journey towards understanding and embodying the gospel of grace.